be a keeper, to play for a former keeper. And she thought it could be, but not with a personality like Megan Geldernick because she's got high expectations just like Coach. One Geldernick has clearly been able to step up. Last year, there was a little bit of a, a battle for the goalkeeping position at Ohio State between Rachel Middleman and Jillian McVicker. I thought Jillian McVicker was going to get the nod, but unfortunately this summer she gets injured, so Geldernick, freshman, has to step up into this role. So thrust into the role, and so far, doing well with it. Here's Sammy Edwards. Varner trying to penetrate. Bodies down for the Boilermakers, but safely away. And Ohio State continues as they possess the ball to look up the middle of the field, and that's exactly what Purdue is trying to invite them to do. They win it then immediately and look to counterattack. Space for Hairston. Quickly closed down, finding an option on the wing. Cleaned up nicely by Ohio State, but Purdue Still ends up behind the ball. Holly Gregory working down this right side. Keep working, boss. First substitutes of the game. Jackie and Medusa Wolf. Number she finds herself in the Nicole midfield Robinson. today, but she's certainly somebody who's and familiar to Ohio defending. State, she's played center back 14. and in the central Emma part of the midfield Wangness. for Ohio State. Emma Wangness in for Ohio State. Nicole Robertson hey, Jively, off the Jively, bench for Jively, Purdue. You hear the voice of Lori Walker. Over. What do you hear out there as a player? You hear fans, you hear other players, you hear coaches, or do you sometimes try to block it all out? I think the most important thing is to pay attention to what's going on at the moment. So if that's your coach that's providing you information in a critical situation, that's what you gotta focus on. If it's a teammate at the goalkeeper behind you, you've gotta focus on what is important in that critical moment of the game. And that changes in an instantly, it's constantly adjusting. It's Alex Hairston always giving her defenders an outlet and an option there in the midfield. And it seems to me as though Purdue has had most of their success up this right side of the field. Alex Harrison has been very busy, and they've been certainly attacking this right flank. Well, as Danielle Slayton mentioned at the top of the broadcast, today is about grit and resilience. It's a typical college soccer weekend. Play on Friday, then again Sunday. Is it more mentally fatiguing or physically when Sunday rolls around? It's both, but you really lean on your teammates and you use each other to get through it and find a way to win. What's the typical training routine? Do you get a day off after that grueling weekend? You have to have a day off that's mandated by the NCAA. And when I was in college, typically that day off was Monday, so you'd play Friday, Sunday, with a light training in between on Saturday. Monday would be off, and then Tuesday and Wednesday would be your hard days. Thursday would be light, and then back at it again on Friday night. Just over 16 minutes to go in this opening half. From the Purdue campus. A few half chances, but Sammy Edwards for Ohio State has probably had the best chance in this game. Varner trying to barge her way in there, but beyond first to it. And if that ball is going to be played over the top like that, it's just got to be a little bit wider. Michaela Lasky did a good job of shielding the ball and made it easy for Jan to come on out and scoop it up. Waltz, one of those freshmen in the midfield for Ohio State that we spoke about. It's Kayla Varner. Number eight up top there for the Buckeyes, working so well in tight space, but here watching possession from the home team, Purdue.
There's Edwards, number 19 for Ohio State. Coach Walker, say she's so dangerous because she can score in a variety of ways. They haven't had a player like her in a while the Ohio State campus. And they've had some good ones. Oh, yeah. Well, and here we see Ohio State looking for this ball in over the top. Pretty simple save if you're communicating well between your back line and your goalkeeper. Those balls certainly need to be played out wider in a space where the goalkeeper really can't come for it as easily. Good shielding there by Michaela Lasky, the defender for Purdue. Here is the freshman, Nikki Walt, standing over the ball. They congregate in the penalty area. Edwards was trying to get ahead on it. It's a good set piece effort by Ohio State. They're known for their willingness to battle, their willingness to fight in the air. This is just the personality of their team. We see Sammy going up for it here. Great job by Molly Carolotto to eat that toughness, get ahead to it. Reckless, abandoned, and fearless words you think of when you watch Sammy Edwards go for one. Helps her in a corner. Comes down conveniently for Wangus. Varner just ran into too many Boilermakers. Paradiso trying to save it. So we're 30 minutes into this game, and it seems as though still both teams are kind of figuring each other out. They're doing an okay job of possessing it in their defensive third, but as they start to move forward, the ideas seem to run out. I'd love to see them try to possess the ball while going forward instead of kicking it over the top, constantly looking to try to get in players behind. Your legs are tired, and there hasn't been much success on either team to be able to get in behind and create a chance on goal that way. Another long ball over the top as we see right there, Ohio State, but I love to see them just possess it a little bit more, but I gotta give credit to Purdue, who's inviting that pass, and it's easy for them to clean it up, transition to attack. Look at the energy, Alex Hairston gets a step wide, dangerous cross in, Purdue! Early advantage, Maddie Williams makes it 1-0. by Maddie Williams. We see Purdue transitioning to attack. Look at this counterattack that they are so great at. Alex Harrison gets the ball across the face of the goal and look at that composure by Maddie Williams. She doesn't try to take it first time. She takes a very clean first touch across her body, opens up the entire width of the goal and look, simple pass towards the far post. Not a lot of wasteful touches, just some sublime finish from Maddie Williams and that deceiving speed from Alex Hairston to get a step going out wide and send that ball through. Fourth of the season for Williams in the 34th minute. And I've got to say that this is what I call a goal by good defending. They invited Ohio State to play that direct ball. Their back line easily won it. They transitioned quickly to attack. Hairston to Williams, simple goal. They make it look so easy right there. So the first goal scored in conference play for Purdue. One more look at how they utilize their width here. Alex Harrison, look, she gets her head up and is willing to take every defender on, get towards that end line, and Maddie Williams just separates herself. She doesn't have to be extremely fast, but let me tell you, in those two or three steps, that was the difference. Her agility was fantastic right there. Looked like Harrison was running downhill there, gaining some momentum, and Here's Alex Hairston once again. And it'll be interesting to see how Ohio State responds. We know they have some confidence in coming back. They did it on Friday night against Indiana. But I know they certainly don't want to be in this position. Having said that, this is where you are. You got to go after it and find a way to get back in. <laughs> Maddie Williams foraging forward again. This is Harrison. Hairston. 
doing some good work again. 21st career assist now, second all-time in Purdue history for Alex Hairston. And it certainly seems like that goal has given Purdue some confidence. They're going forward, they're sending numbers forward. You hear their bench and, and the fans are more energized by it. Great job to put them up and then use that momentum to propel them forward more. They were unbeaten in five in non-conference play entering that first match in the conference Friday. So it's not like they haven't had success this year. Well, the Big Ten Digital Network is now BTN Plus, available on BTN to go. Subscribe to BTN Plus and gain access to hundreds of non-televised games, then enjoy them on more platforms wherever you are. Get BTN Plus now, available on BTN to go. Always sports fans or broadcaster's best friend. <laughs> so much great coverage of all the Olympic sports in the Big Ten Conference. Decent footwork on the perimeter there from Purdue. As they continue to gain confidence going forward off of that goal. And Purdue really just seems to be owning this right flank. Hairston going forward, Holly Gregory right here getting involved in the attack. Take a peek here. That's just, to me, this is just a little bit of a freshman mistake. Lucky the yellow card doesn't come out there for Lindsey Agnew. Meantime, Ohio State prepares for another corner. Over! Second ball. Stopped by the freshman. The back line takes care of the rest for Ohio State. Almost a 2-0 advantage for Purdue. Take a look at this action. Look, Gelderner goes up for the ball, but look, there, she just unmarked Molly Kiramoto wide open on the six-yard box. I love her grit, her fight in there, unable to get it across the goal line. Strolling forward again, Purdue. Immediately brushed out by the Buckeyes here. Under nine minutes to go in the opening half. It's the sophomore, we should say, Lindsay Agnew. I believe it was Nicole Mirashiro who came to the aid of her keeper, Megan Geldernick, and provided that goal line clearance to keep this at just a one nothing lead for Purdue. As Taylor Schisler has entered the match for Ohio State. Coming in for Wangness. And on Sunday games, we typically see maybe a few extra subs, just trying to give players a little bit of a rest. And, and figure out a way for everybody to make a difference and make an impact. Because let me tell you, the grind of two games in less than 48 hours is a tough and tall order, particularly if you're trying to play 90 minutes for both matches. At least some nice, cool, crisp fall weather. We know it could be warmer at this time of the year, but it's certainly good soccer weather. Launched in by Agnew. Free ball and a big stop. Erica Yan stopping Sammy Edwards. This starts off a fantastic long throw by Agnew. And just a poor header that bounces right down to the center of the goal. Erica Yan. I think she got a little bit lucky. She got her hands up, but luckily for her, it went straight to her towards her, and she was able to parry that over the top of the crossbar. Good luck, as you saw the frustration from Sammy Edwards, because it was a pretty good finish. It was destined up her 90, but the paw, the freshman keeper, knocks it away. Another corner coming. Agnew gets ahead on it. Bodies down. Scramble in front. 
Varner and Ohio State keep it with them and punching it over the bar, but the chance is coming here late for Ohio State as they try for the equalizer. And we've certainly seen some opportunities on corner kicks for both teams. Jan comes out to get it, but again, just bouncing around here, not well cleared. And look at that, those balls are so dangerous because those deflections, you just can't react to very quickly. Lucky for Purdue that it goes over the goal. Not a lot of off offensive chances early in this match, but a lot here in the final 15 minutes. And when games are tight, it often comes down to set pieces. We talk about set pieces all the time when you get into tight games. And in a Big Ten conference like match like this, that really could be the difference. Good tackle there by Lasky. She directs. We saw the power of the deep throw here from Agnew moments ago that almost created Ohio State goal, trying to do it again. Little spillage is just punched away by the keeper. Agnew testing from distance, and she catches Yawn. And Lindsay Agnew has leveled it. Last eight goals scored by number 20, Lindsay Agnew. That's her first of the season. Well, a long throw in is so dangerous because it's almost like a set piece. Purdue does not do a good enough job of clearing it. Agnew, she's just taking a half chance here, and Jan just gets a little bit lost. She's not quite sure where her goal is. I don't think Agnew thought this was gonna go in the goal. She just thought, hey, let me put it back in the mix, create a dangerous chance. She catches Jan, not quite on her game. She misplaces where her footing is, and that sneaks in the near post. First goal of the season for Lindsay Agnew. Yeah, you're right. Erica Yawn, the dust had, hasn't even settled from that initial scramble. She just lost where she was. And Ohio State takes advantage. Some might say, look for a while, this was going to be a nil-nil draw. Not so fast. Two teams that haven't generated a ton of goals, dealing with injuries to some of their offensive players, but finding their attack here late in the opening half. This is Kayla Varner looking to create some commotion Keeper there, Yawn. See how she responds after allowing that goal from Lindsay Agnew. Dangerous pass back. Geldernick off her line to bail out her back line. So I haven't seen a lot of mistakes in this game, and we see one that almost leads to a quick goal. That's a clear error. I mean, just a miscommunication, not hit well enough back pass to your goalkeeper. But we see it on the other side. I mean, it looked right there that Jan was coming out and there might not have been great communication as well for the Purdue team. So there haven't been a ton of mistakes, but it also hasn't been a really clean game. There have been a lot of unforced errors, in my opinion, and I think that both teams need to clean that up. Corner earned by Purdue here late. And here we see a, just a poor back pass. And Purdue, they have the wherewithal to just try and jump on that ball, try to make something happen. Holly Gregory to play another Purdue corner. It's Geldernick showing those leadership skills. It's a freshman. Talking to Sammy Edwards, be aware. They play it short. Second try, little closer look. Defended by Ohio State, but Purdue keeps possession. Holly Gregory, unable to penetrate on the counter under two minutes to go in the opening half. Gobbled up in the midfield by Corollis. It, 
It looked like the referee actually gave the clock stop signal, but it hasn't stopped yet. Getting a foot on it was Lasky. One minute remaining. A lot of numbers there for Ohio State to deal with it. Good numbers behind the ball by Ohio State, but they've got to do a better job of clearing the ball. Even when they're clearing it, they're clearing it directly to a Purdue Boilermaker player, and it's really not out of danger, even though it's just a little bit farther away from the goal. Good look there at the determined Alex Hairston. Free out here for Ohio State in the dying seconds of this opening half. It was Maddie Williams scoring first. Lindsey Agnew responds for Ohio State. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Geldernick, freshman, made a big stop for head coach Lori Walker. Sometimes the score line lies. I think 1-1 after 45 is pretty fair. Would you agree? Yeah, and it's been a little bit of a sloppy game to me. I think both teams can do a better job of possessing it and just being a little bit more patient when they get into attack, have some better ideas, and create some better opportunities closer to goal. It was a slow start by both sides. Not a lot of goal-scoring chances in the early moments of the half, but an explosion at the end. We could have had more than two. Right now, as we stand, Ohio State won, Purdue won. So we'll come back and have more here at half. Pure Silk. A day as smooth as Pure Silk? That's hard. Legs as smooth as Pure Silk? That's easy. A better shave, a better you. Legs like Pure Silk. Enter a new Build a mighty empire and take on your enemies in Forge of Empires. Now available for PC and iPad. Play free at foe.tv. Are you anxious to protect your family with life insurance, but afraid you can't afford it? Well, look how much insurance many people can get through SelectQuote for less than a dollar a day. SelectQuote found Rich, 37, a $500,000 policy for under $20 a month. Even though Dave, 43, takes meds to control his cholesterol, SelectQuote got him a $500,000 policy for under $29 a month. Ellen, 47, got a $250,000 policy for under $18 a month. All it takes is a phone call. Your personal select quote agent will answer all your questions and impartially shop the highly rated term life companies select quote represents for your best rates. Give your family the security it needs at a price you can afford. Call this number or go to selectquote.com. Select quote. We shop, you save. What a Sunday in Big Ten country. Purdue and Ohio State tied at one in men's action. It's Ohio State and Northwestern. Earlier today, Dean and Chris have the whole story. Ohio State goalkeeper Alex Ivanov earning a shutout as the Buckeyes begin Big Ten play with a 2-0 win over Northwestern in Columbus, Ohio. Dean Linke along with Chris Doran and a big game for the Buckeyes. 
they finally beat Northwestern, a team they've really struggled with. And it was because of Ivanov and his well-organized defense and then a little goal scoring at the other end of the field that helped them get over the hump. You mentioned the goals. Let's roll to the highlights and we'll see him here for Ohio State. Well, Kyle Culperson was the sub in the second half and he gets this ball from Saris. Does a really nice job of locking and loading far post. Not sure if it's going in or not if he doesn't get the help of Connor Holloway, the defender for Northwestern who wants that ball up and out. Instead, it goes down and in over Tyler Miller's shoulder. Older, Ohio State up 1-0. McCrary does a terrific job of penetrating on the dribble. Drives a ball across the goal mouth. Other side, Kyle Culbertson again. But in this situation, the defender, Northwestern's Roberts, gets a hand up. Handball called. Penalty kick awarded. Liam Doyle, the big lefty, steps in, puts it home, secures the win for the Buckeyes. The Ohio State men knock off Northwestern by a score of two to nothing. When we come back, Dan Kelly and Daniel Slayton will have the highlights from West Lafayette. People everywhere are finding delicious ways to yummify with five-hour energy, like pomegranate five-hour and lemonade. Unbelievable. Great five-hour and lemon-lime soda. Amazing. Orange five-hour and club soda. Yum-tastic. Yum. Extra strength sour apple and cranberry juice. Yum. There are a million ways to yummify with five-hour energy. Just grab your favorite beverage, open and pour. Get more yummification inspiration at fivehouryummification.com. When you told me about this Candy Crush game at first, I thought, so what? But now I can't stop playing. <laughs> That's not how it works. I mean, it's so simple. It's like my car insurance. I say 15% in 15 minutes. Well, insurance could have saved you money in half that time. Three in a row. Sweet. 15 minutes for a quote isn't so sweet. Level two. Start with a quote from insurance and you can save money on car insurance in half the time. Welcome to the modern world. Insurance. Back. I'm a totally different man. You could do one thing only. Incline training is it. It eliminated that fat. Just get up and walk. You want to change your life? Then you need to step up to the X9 from Nordic Track. What makes the X9 the best calorie burning machine on the planet? Incline. Going up. Now you're burning twice the calories. You want more? Take it all the way to 40% incline for five times the calorie burn. The X9 is one of the fastest ways ever to burn calories. And all you have to do is walk. Plus, the X9 comes with iFit, powered by Google Maps, so you can work out anywhere. Burn fat jogging on the beaches of Fiji. Shed pounds hiking the Swiss Alps. With iFit, the X9 automatically adjusts, so your workout follows the terrain. I can most definitely shed calories and burn fat. You can just walk the calories off. Get this amazing machine for zero down and free shipping, $150 value. To order, call 1-800-310-0501 or go online today. Second half, just around the corner from the Purdue campus. After one half of play, Ohio State and Purdue all level at one next to Danielle Slayton. I'm Dan Kelly. It was a funky first half. We thought we were going to see a scoreless stalemate. Then all of a sudden we see a lot of goal scoring chances. What do you expect here in the second? Well, I think that both of these teams really have to focus on getting back to their keys, particularly Ohio State. We talked about them using the whip. I think they can do a better job. We talked about them defending the counterattack. Purdue's goals comes off of a counterattack. Purdue, on the other hand, they just got to stay with it, finish their chances, and be very sound, particularly on set pieces. We look at the highlights and both teams testing and probing early, trying to find the right recipe to success. Well, we've had some early chances we see Maddie Williams taking the ball up shooting from distance nothing quite coming from it but they're trying to feel out Gelderneck on the other side of the ball we see Ohio State trying to play the ball over the top and I think this is their best chance in the sense that Sammy Edwards gets in and tests Yon. Transition, transition, transition. We have talked about that with Purdue. They're looking and they counter up the middle. That's not where the space is. They need to go out wide. Same thing for Ohio State. A long ball over the top. Good communication from the back line and Erica Yon. She's easily able to swoop that up. And we've talked about using the width. Look at this. Harrison, she gets wide. She takes on her defender, gets all the way to the end.